हेलो एवरी वन इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट क्लॉटिंग प्रोसेस इफ यू हैवंट वॉच द वीडियो द लिंक इज इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन नाउ वी टर्न टू द मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स मेकेनिजम दैट इनिशिएट क्लॉटिंग इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस दीज मेकेनिजम इंक्लूड ट्रॉमा टू द वेस्कुलर वॉल एंड एडजेसेंट टिश्यू ट्रॉमा टू द ब्लड और कॉन्टैक्ट ऑफ द ब्लड विथ डैमेज एंडोथेरियल सेल्स और विथ कोलाजन एंड अदर टिश्यू एलिमेंट्स आउटसाइड द ब्लड वेसल दीज मेकेनिजम आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ प्रोथ्रॉम्बिन एक्टिवेटर विच कॉजेस द प्रोथ्रॉम्बिन कन्वर्जन टू थ्रॉम्बिन एंड ऑल अदर सब्सिक्वेंट क्लॉटिंग स्टेप्स प्रोथ्रॉम्बिन एक्टिवेटर इज जनरली कंसिडर्ड to be formed in two different ways one by the extrinsic pathway that begins with trauma to the vascular wall and surrounding tissue and second by the intrinsic pathway that begins in the blood in both the extrinsic and intrinsic pathway a series of different plasma proteins called blood clotting factors play a major role now Let's first take a look on extrinsic pathway for initiation of clotting. The extrinsic pathway for initiating the formation of prothrombin activator begins with a traumatized vascular wall or traumatized extravascular tissue that come in contact with the blood. This traumatized tissue releases a complex of several factors called tissue factor or tissue thromboplastin this factor is composed especially of phospholipids from the membranes of the tissues plus a lipoprotein complex that functions mainly as a proteolytic enzyme the lipoprotein complex of tissue factor further complexes with blood coagulation factor 7 6 and in the presence of calcium ions acts enzymatically on factor 10 to form activated factor 10 now the activated factor 10 combines immediately with tissue phospholipid that are part of tissue factors or with additional phospholipids released from platelets as well as with factor 5 to form the complex called as prothrombin activator within a few seconds in the presence of calcium prothrombin it split to form thrombin and the clotting process proceeds as already explained at first the factor 5 in the prothrombin activator complex is inactive but once the clotting begins and thrombin begins to form the proteolytic action of thrombin activates the factor 5 this becomes an additional strong accelerator of prothrombin activation hence in the final prothrombin activator complex activated factor 10 is the actual protease that causes splitting of prothrombin to form thrombin activated factor 5 greatly accelerates this protease activity and platelet phospholipids act as a vehicle that further accelerates the process note especially the positive feedback effect of thrombin acting through factor 5 to accelerate the entire process once it begins now let's talk about intrinsic pathway for initiation of clotting the second mechanism for initiating the formation of prothrombin activator and therefore for initiating clotting begins with trauma to the blood or exposure of the blood to collagen from a traumatized blood vessel wall then the process continues through the series of reactions the blood trauma causes activation of factor 12 and release of platelet phospholipid trauma to the blood or exposure of the blood to vascular wall collagen 
alters two important clotting factors in the blood factor 12 and platelets now see what happens here is when factor 12 is distributed by coming into contact with collagen it takes on a new molecular configuration that converts it into a proteolytic enzyme called activated factor 12 simultaneously the blood trauma also damages the platelets because of adherence to either collagen or a wettable surface and this releases platelet phospholipids that contain the lipoprotein called platelet factor 3 which also plays a role in clotting reactions the next step is activation of factor 11 the activated factor 12 acts enzymatically on factor 11 to activate it as well this reaction also requires high molecular weight kininogen and is accelerated by precalicrin in the third step factor 9 is activated with the help of activated factor 11 and in the presence of calcium next step involves activation of factor 10 the activated factor 9 acting in concern with activated factor 8 and with the platelet phospholipids and factor 3 from the traumatized platelets activates factor 10 in total factor 9 factor 8 factor 3 and platelet phospholipids are needed for activation of factor 10 the factor 8 is missing in a person who has classic hemophilia for which reason it is called as anti hemophilic factor the final step involves action of activated factor 10 to form prothrombin activator This step is similar to the final step of extrinsic pathway. This is activated factor 10 combines with factor 5 and platelets or tissue phospholipids to form a complex called prothrombin activator. Now, the prothrombin activator initiates within seconds the cleavage of prothrombin to form thrombin. interaction between the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways summary of blood clotting initiation now it is clear about intrinsic and extrinsic systems that after blood vessels rupture clotting occurs by both pathways simultaneously tissue factor initiates the extrinsic pathway whereas contact of factor 12 and platelets with collagen in the vascular wall initiates the intrinsic pathway an important difference between the extrinsic and intrinsic pathways is that the extrinsic pathway can be explosive once initiated its speed of completion to the final clot is limited only by the amount of tissue factor released from the traumatized tissues and by the quantities of factor 10 12 and 5 in the blood with severe tissue trauma clotting can occur in as little as 15 seconds the intrinsic pathway is much slower to proceed usually requiring 1 to 6 minutes to cause clotting hope you all understand the overall processes of extrinsic and intrinsic pathways so this was all about today's video see you all in the next video till then take care stay safe like share and subscribe to my channel